and it's six o'clock. Why don't we get started? Um, first thing on the agenda, are, are there any adjustments to the agenda at all? I have nothing. Okay, I, I don't have anything either. Are there, um, are Ryan, any, anything, anything that anybody else might have? Uh, Diana or Brandy? Guess not. Okay. Nothing from me. Everything looks good. Okay. Um, so, is there any public comment at all? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on. Um, so, Paul and Brian, did you get a chance to look at the the bills at the town office? I have not. I uh, was straight out all day. I'll try to go there okay. tomorrow. I did get down there and signed off on them. Okay, so there's two of us, um, yep. so we can we can approve them. Um, I think in the well, hopefully in the future we'll be meeting in a physical space again. But um, you know, I've just been realizing that when we approve the bills, we probably should at least have a quorum of the select board that's had a chance to look at them. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the bills to the town. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And. Um, then I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes from the June 8th, um, 2020 select board meeting and the June 10th uh, special select board meeting. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. okay. <clears throat> and those are those are down in the town office too to, to be signed up. All right, I'll sign those when I go down. Okay. Um, and then it, at, at 6.05 or, or shortly thereafter, we're, we're gonna be joined by Allison Thomas, she's the um, education director for the Fish and Wildlife uh, Management Agency. Um, she wants to talk to us about uh, the Buck Lake Camp um, and the possibility of maybe putting up a gate. Um, she's gonna be joining us by phone. Um, and of course she's scheduled at 6.05 and we're a little ahead of schedule. <coughs> so, um, um. Uh, let's see. Michael, sure. this is Allie Thomas. Are you oh, able to hear me? I am. Okay, <laughs> that's you there. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah. go go ahead, Allie. You're you're on the next on the agenda. Okay, thanks. I won't take up much time, but okay. one thing that we were wondering is Buck Lake uh, Conservation Camp, right up Buck Lake Road in Woodbury, is as you all know, part of a class four road, but it's within a wildlife management area that our department manages, which also has the campus for the camp program there. Um, that road will always remain open because there's a fishing access and boat access area available kind of toward the end of the road. The problem we're seeing, especially more this year because we have no staff on site to kind of monitor the, the waterfront area, is despite signs and, and cones and um, other indicators that people are not supposed to go beyond the public access part of that road and not to the waterfront. We're having a lot of people drive down there, which isn't the worst thing if they were to just drive and put in a boat, we wouldn't really <coughs> care. The problem is a lot of people are starting fires in the fire pits or next to the fire pits or on the shoreline, which is a danger dangerous situation. Um, and sometimes they're, they're leaving a lot of trash behind. Uh, we have a rowboat down there that I've tried to cable, but when I cable it, it gets cut. And so it's better if we just don't cable it and let people use it, but they often don't put it back. So long story short, there's just a lot of people who aren't really policing themselves well down there. So normally we have staff on site to say, you know, this isn't an area open to the public, please go to the access area. But this summer we don't. Um, by this point, it's too late to put up a gate that would help for this summer, just because by the time we could get all the contract in place and acquire a gate, it, um, the summer would be done. But it did make me realize a gate would probably help in the long run anyway with a lot of those issues. And so specifically what, we're, what we would like to just pot, like the idea of maybe doing is putting up a gate beyond that public access part of the road, which is at the very end, kind of right before the waterfront loop happens, just to di divert people from going down there and parking and, and kind of leaving trash and just camping out all day there, um, because it's not that intention of that spot. 
So I know that's a big a big question because it's a class four road, and I don't even know what the efficacy of a gate would do <laughs> because um, I, I know sometimes there are issues with gates getting rammed and other types of vandalism, but I thought I would plant the seed and ask about one. So perhaps in the future, when our state budget loosens up a little bit and we have more flexibility to purchase items, um, that might be something we could entertain. And so I thought, well, now's a good time to talk about it. And so we would be ready if, if it was approved. So that's kind of my spiel if anyone has any questions. <laughs> I've got one. Where exactly did you want to put the gate? I wasn't clear on it. <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, are you familiar with Buck Lake Road? Yes. Okay, so you know, there's the public access turn that's to the right as you're going yep. down the road toward the lake. Yep. Beyond that is camp property and, and theoretically off limits to the public just staying there and using the waterfront area. Right. Technically, that road goes through, so they could use that kind of, but. Um, we would like it just somewhere beyond that public access point that and we currently have a sign up that just says please you know no public beyond this point but um, just somewhere beyond that public access so we could stop at least the cars from going up it and then it would possibly help with the ATV traffic in the off season as well um, which I know is a little bit of an issue okay I don't have a problem with that I'm not sure about Mike and Paul but I don't yeah, know. Our only, our Go only issue is, is access to the dry hydrant. We would have to have uh, one of our Knox locks put on there so we could get through it with our Knox box key. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Because what, what we typically would do is you would put your padlock on it and you'd lo loop it through our padlock. So if either party unlocked their padlock, you can still open the gate. That way we don't have to keep okay. the gate key. Um, but you'd have to just contact me and you can go online and buy a Knox key and it'll use the same key, which we can get into your building with, with that Knox box that you have. Okay, so that's great to know. And again, right now we have an absolute spending freeze on all state funds and part of okay. camp is state funded. So I, I can't purchase it, but I really wanted to start the conversation not knowing how long, you know, if you wanted to talk about it with me offline for a while or whatever. Um, I just wanted to start it so, so if, if in the future we do want one, we had permission. Yeah, I saw your, we went down there to uh, to test the dry hydrant this year and there must've been 15 people down there. We had a hard time getting into <laughs> to the hydrant. Yeah, that's, that's the issue. I stopped to check your yeah. building, the knock box and your door was wide open. <laughs> in the yeah, and room, you know what? The, the state police that night. Yeah, um, the problem with that is someone keeps picking our lock. Uh, <laughs> like we're we're locking them. Uh, someone can pick those locks and and we had a locksmith out there just the other day like like wow. last Friday and and he said you have really good locks someone who knows how to pick locks really well so that's a bummer um, for all of Woodbury as it were but uh, yeah. I, you know there's some things I can't defend against I guess except we do have cameras out now so well, I did call the state that, police that, that night we closed the door for you so it was locked up but I think they must have called you oh, I appreciate that, that. Yeah, I appreciate that very much. Thanks, Paul. It's an issue, and, and we're trying to figure it out with cameras. And changing the locks is a huge deal because they're all yeah. synchronized. So Correct. we're trying to avoid that. But And if someone can pick it, what's the difference? So we're just trying to figure out um, a few ways to avoid some vandalism anyway, knowing that there's always going to be a little bit of stuff that happens there. But so, so that's all the time I wanted to take of you. Again, you can talk about it more when I'm offline and get back to me, but I just wanted to present the idea um, to this group tonight. So thanks for your time. Can I make a comment okay. before you go? Oh, go yeah. Ahead, Diana. Okay, I just think it's, uh, I know people abuse the, the uh, lakefront area. It's a real shame because it's a beautiful place and it would be wonderful for for Woodbury residents to have a place to bring their kayaks. I don't think the fishing access is very much use at all. But I wanted to also say that I think it's kind of, I know everybody's short of money, but with all the investment the state has out there, to leave that with no, uh, no kind of monitoring, no staff there all summer, I think is kind of irresponsible. So you can pass that on to the governor. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't talk to him very much, but what I will say is we do have a staff member out there every day all summer this year. Oh. So it isn't completely unstaffed. Uh, and the fighting the fish purposes, game wardens could be asked to, to check that more often also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Russ does a good job of monitoring that as best he can too. But I do appreciate the feedback and yeah, we're trying while well, keeping within our budget and keeping our staff safe. Um to, to keep that area monitored and staffed pretty much at all times now. It, it really is a, a very isolated area and, you know, um, vandalism, it's kind of a, a ripe piece of fruit for vandalism. Um, it would be good mm -hmm. to try to, and I, I just wanted to say that I approve the, the putting it of a gate also. So I think, you know, with the lockbox um, that Paul mentioned in his in his fire with his fire chief hat, um, I think mm -hmm. you know, I think that the select board is in support of of having that happen. So whenever whenever oh, it's possible. Great, yep. thanks. I really appreciate yep. your time and and your openness to this. And I'll just stay in touch with you and Paul, Mike, um, okay. regarding regarding the gate when again when when we have a little more flexibility with things. Um, but thank okay. you for your time. I really appreciate it. Great. Yeah, thank you, Allison. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, take care. Bye. Yeah. Okay. So um, next on the agenda is, um, you know, we've been getting a lot of calls um, of um, different sites uh, with um, junk um, and shooters and uh, people complaining about um, uh, sites with a, that are getting pretty well trashed. So um, I just I have invited a few people to to join us to for a discussion about that. We talked about it a little bit at our last select board meeting. I did get a a um, template uh, ordinance, a junk junk car ordinance from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Um, I, I'm hoping that some people have have received that, um, and anyone who would like to to see that for further discussion because um, we won't solve everything tonight but i would like to start a discussion about this um, there seems to be a, a real wave of complaints um, uh, this summer um, so um, this is kind of a beginning a beginning round of, of discussion about this um, so i know that there's that there's an issue um, on county road up by greenwood lake um, the uh, Compliance and Enforcement uh, Division of the um, Department of Environmental Conservation is working on that. I tried to get an update from them um, and they're speaking with the agent who's dealing with that. He actually has a meeting with the property owner tomorrow. So I hope to know a little bit more about what's going on there. Um, and I know there's also uh, an issue with that same property owner about um, firearms and and other than stuff like that and the person from the DEC um, clearly stated to me that that's not an issue that they will deal with that that um, and no one's from town should really try to deal with it either that's something for the state police to deal with so uh, I just and and neighbors too you know that I know that um, that you have had some run-ins with this person um, and I don't want anybody getting hurt. So, um, you know, if, if that's the shooting uh, and any any other kind of behavior that makes people feel really uneasy or unsafe, um, that's an issue for the state police. Um, Is there agreed. any ordinance against the shooting over there, Michael? Beg your pardon? Is there any kind of ordinance or anything that's enforceable as far as the shooting goes? Not that I'm aware of, no. I mean, people can shoot on their own property. You know, there's a lot of people in town that target shoot, or um, I think there's a question in this situation on how safely that this person is doing it. And and also the fact that it happens, seems to happen in the middle of the night or late at night. Um, and so maybe it's an ordinance against shooting after like 10 p.m. maybe or something? Well, we could look and see if there is such a, I mean, it could, there, that could, qualify under perhaps a noise ordinance and um and i you know we could inquire of the lct and um paul did you have some thoughts on that uh yeah i mean the tough part of this you've kind of hit on it already is the enforcement of these things right 
state police, it's not going to be a top priority because obviously they're really busy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I'm not opposed to ordinances on the face of it. I just don't know where we go once the violation okay. happens. That's right. the struggle I have because we all, I'm sure we don't want, you know, as fire warden, I've had things come to blows with uh, guns and everything else with just burning. Mm -hmm. You know, where and I told the yep. firefighters, I said, don't get into that. I, I don't want to see the state police have to shoot anybody, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, did you have a comment? Yeah, the, the, we had an incident on the lake here on Memorial Day Monday with a very, very large boat raising destructive wakes. The state police were called, and the reason the state police showed up is that the people that called the state police said that we had an incident, an unsafe operation. Consequently, in talking with the state police, they said uh, they cannot come out to address a, uh, and answer a, a call that a citizen has made unless there's some violation uh, that they can come out and check. So, for, for example, when peop if people called up and said there's a big boat on the lake, it shouldn't be here, they couldn't address that. But when you right. call and say dangerous and unsafe operation, they can come out. That in mind with the shooting, uh, if you call the state police and say, we suspect he's using a, a magazine or a clip that's in excess of 10 or 15 rounds, they will check on that. Or I swear, I swear this guy's been setting off bombs in his backyard because it, you know, the concussion, I can feel the concussion on my deck. I'm, I don't know, how far am I away, Sean? A good mile away? Yeah. And if you call up, say, somebody's setting off explosives, again, they're going to check that stuff. But if you call and say somebody's shooting, they can't. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's how you frame the call. And we got to educate the people who are going to make those calls to frame the call properly. And Sean, myself, and a couple other people in the community have, have already discussed that in terms of okay. calling the state police on the shooting. Mm -hmm. I mean, state police keep showing up there saying, hey, what's going on? He hopefully gets the message. Right, right. Well, and yeah. another thing about a shooting, his property is surrounded by either uh, marsh or private properties. Uh, he has almost no safe way to shoot on his property without the potential for uh, shooting on some other person's property. Onto the lake and stuff, yeah. Yeah, lake or, uh, I mean, he's surrounded by private property on all on three sides and Lake and Marsh on the fourth side. So, and very, very closely. I mean, we're talking. That, that Marsh uh, technically is private property also. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because he so, doesn't own a lot of land there, I take it. So where, where the building is, is he, you know, is he shooting out behind that? Because that would be all hillside. That seems like that would be a safe place to. From what we know, he is, uh, if you were to walk out his front door cross County Road, yeah, uh, and then enter the the marsh side of his property, and then face more or less south. He's short uh, shooting toward uh, Ann Weller's property. Uh -huh. uh, there's mm -hmm. a driveway that is right behind where he shoots, mm -hmm. so shooting right at her driveway. It's probably a relatively safe spot because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of traffic. But it, you know, we do see people on there summer and winter. Yeah. There's no hill or, or rise in the in the landscape to stop a bullet at that spot. Not, not in that spot. If he did, like one of you said, and, and shot in the back hill, uh, you know, against Woodbury Mountain, that would be a different shooting situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. Okay. Well, it sounds like the neighbors there, you know, are pretty clear on what they have to do as far as the shooting issue is is concerned. Um, so let, I guess I, I'd like to kind of steer our conversation back to, you know, just the um, junk, I guess. Um, the different, there, there are a number of properties that seem to be causing their neighbors um, uh, unease. And, you know, we've been receiving different calls up from West Woodbury, um, other spots here in, in Woodbury. I know the... Um, the uh, agent at DEC is working on at least three sites. Um, so um, in town, yeah. 
Um, and I know uh, Bob Martin sent me an email about some other sites that he's aware of. So um, it, it does seem to be an issue. Um, and, you know, again, like Paul said, you know, we, we, we could create an ordinance, but, um, you know, we have found that, you know, we have a, a animal control officer and a, and a, a animal ordinance and trying to do any kind of enforcement for that seems to be uh, pretty frustrating um, and kind of gets nowhere, really, it seems. So um, I don't know how, you know, we well, have to... the, the problem comes is that uh, what I've experienced is sometimes the other party is willing to keep escalating the level of, of violence even. And mm -hmm. so you either got to stick and stay, which means arming yourself, doing all those type of things, but I don't think it's what we want to do. No. Or you've got to get the police to come, which again, they're very limited in their ability to respond to these type of things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's the tough part. Um, right. if, you know, obviously these things work well with people who are willing to say, hey, I made a mistake or, well, you got me and I'm going to stop it. Right. But you don't work well with someone who wants to, to defy that and make you, make you push the issue. Um, and that's where we're running into the problem. Because again, I, at my state level job, I've worked into things where we've gotten ju judges' orders to get defied because again, we, we see the issues with the police having to have struggles with someone to enforce a court order. They kind of step back and say, well, it's not worth that. You know, I, is mm -hmm. it worth getting guns out, potentially shooting someone over this particular thing? And, yeah. and that's kind of the thing going on today. It's kind of a apropos topic that we're on because that's what these things end up with eventually or could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And can I, if I could add one thing about this, uh, I'm a firm believer that for the most part, we should allow our neighbors to do what they want. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I really want to be left alone. I live out in the country for that reason. But when I impact someone else or when my neighbors impact others, I think that's where the issue is. And, and there's a, probably six or seven junked uh, vehicles over on this property, and that's one thing. But there's also been uh, concern about him filling in wetlands. Uh, sure and about him cutting down trees on the wetlands and even, and I, I cannot uh, tell you if this is true or not, but I've, I've heard multiple reports of him cleaning out uh, house furnaces on the property, which would directly go into our, our mm -hmm. lake. And Did you mean oil property. tank? Yeah, yeah, I see there's oil tanks there. And so that, this is not just a, an automobile, you know, oh, no. on the yard. This is something in my yeah. mind, it's a, a bigger threat to, you know, to why we're out here. You know? And and the, the agent from the agent from DEC is is very much aware of that and and you know he he is actively working um, with a property owner to and I don't know what you know what the end result will be, but um they do have enforcement. Um, you know they're able to enforce the what they require of the property owner. Um, so and he you know the minute I mentioned this to him. He knew of the site. He knew, you know, of, of some of the problems, and and was immediately on working on the site. So that that situation there is definitely being investigated right now. Um, and um, can we get an update from those guys, Michael? I tried to get. I did get a tried to get an update. Um, and um, the the agent said that he actually has a meeting with the property owner tomorrow. That's good. Um, so what I'll do is email him on. Um, probably Wednesday um, or call him um, and ask him, you know, what's to give me an update. Um, point, point of clarification. He's not meeting with the property owner. He's meeting with the grandson of the property right. owner who lives okay. there. The right. person who lives person. there. Yeah. Is that right, Sean? That is I right. I believe that's right. Yeah. That's true. That's who he's meeting with. I'm just trying not to say any names in, a, in our psych <laughs> board meeting. Um, but yes, that, that is true. It is the grandson of the property owner. And, you know, when we had troubles there a couple of years ago, we tried to contact the property owner who we were told that that person was no longer alive and that this person's father would be the person to contact. And he was impossible to get a hold of. So we kind of went down a dead end road there. Um, so, you know, and obviously this is a person that we have to, that we have to deal with. I don't, um, so, but, and that, it does seem to be that there, this fellow from uh, the agent from DEC, um, he will definitely get results um, one way or the other. So. 
Paul. Yeah. Did, did you? I just saw your your audio light come on, so I was wondering if you. No, no, my computer okay. is still doing its uh, update. Okay, all right. Okay. And and <laughs> so, and I know um, I've heard of a uh, you know another property owner up in West Woodbury. There have been some complaints. Yeah, there's some challenges up there too. Yeah, and I noticed that there there is one person from West Woodbury here with us. I don't know if they want to make any comments or, that, or if they just want to hear the conversation that we've had. I haven't contacted the agent um, from enforcement and compliance at DEC about the situation up in West Woodbury. Um, I know that somebody did do a site visit there. I think it was last year when there was concerns about something happening in a stream that flows through the property and the person did go up there and look at it and and it, you know from his point of view there was no um, compromising of the stream so you know he didn't have an issue with hi with michael that. um we're just here to kind of listen in on things and okay see what kind of progress and what kind of enforcement action you folks might be looking at with that property i have not yeah. been down there breaks my heart to go down there yeah um, i've been meaning to get up there to take a look at it you know it's a half hour drive for me to get there and i've been kind of busy lately but um i i have been you know kind of wanting to just mention this site to the same agent that's working at other sites in in woodbury he hasn't mentioned that he has been there um but um that's i guess I, the next I kind thing for us to get him up that, there. what's that brian that's probably the next level for us to go is to make sure we get this guy to go up there to west woodbury and look at it yeah i i guess i just you know he's pretty busy too i don't want him to go on a wild goose chase i mean it may so i thought it might be good. I should I should just try to get up there and take a wouldn't take me too long to assess what's going on there, whether or not it would be actually, you know, and he might actually be able to um to kind of use his computer and, and use the satellites. That's what he did um for the County Road Green Greenwood Lake um property. He kind of looked at it through the satellite images. Um wow. so maybe he could do the same up in West Woodbury. Yeah, it's worth a um, shot. Yeah, I'll ask him up to do that. See what he says. Do you have the address for it up there? I do. Yeah. 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 So you know, and we can we can explore an ordinance again. You know, it's it's the it's that old, you yeah. know, the end question about enforcing whatever we write down. Um, and yeah, because on the face of it, I don't oppose ordinances. It's just uh, I really would want to put it out. Obviously, we'll have public meetings and whatnot. Um, right. to see what the public's appetite is for it for the right. rest of the folks because I do understand the issues everybody's having. Right. I know and just reading through the model ordinance, you know, there would be a number of properties in town that would be actually eligible for some kind of scrutiny and um, right. so that could create a whole issue in town too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Diana, did you I have a com comment? I, did, I just wanted to read everybody this uh, ordinance that we do have on the books uh, on, in zoning. It says, Section 3.8, Storage of Motor Vehicles and Miscellaneous Junk. In all districts of the town, any motor vehicle which is not state inspected and all miscellaneous junk must be stored in an enclosed building or placed in a rear yard and screened from view from any public way. Right. But, you know, that's zoning and we don't have, again, uh, much enforcement. See, right. sometimes it just helps to tell people, but in these cases, I don't think it's going to help. Well, some the state of them law, yeah. The state mm -hmm. law, as far as, as vehicles go, isn't it like, I think it's like three unregistered vehicles? It's You're three, have three unregistered person. vehicles, yes. Oh. Yeah. And you know, if with with that being state law, again, you know, if the town doesn't really feel it has much um, of a of an arm for enforcement, um, this is where the uh, enforcement and compliance at DEC, you know, because that's a state statute, um, they would be willing to um, get involved with any any situation like that. Um, I think that's a isn't that a DMV. Uh rule not an anr uh well that's... no it's it's part of um you know the fellow that i've been um talking to and working with you know he mentioned that also that that's 
it's a state statute, so it doesn't really matter, you know, what agency. Yeah, with, yeah. Right. It's not just particular to the Department of Motor Vehicles. Um, so, you know, just from the folks that are here tonight um, who, you know, have issues with this um, and are kind of involved in a situation that's, um, that they'd probably rather not be involved in, what are your thoughts on the, t on the select board, the town pursuing some type of, uh, I'll call it a junk ordinance for lack of a better word. Any, any comments, Skip? <laughs> I I think it's worth pursuing at this point okay. to see what we can come up with. And again, there's some people that might not realize that they're doing something they shouldn't be, and that ordinance would be sufficient to uh, uh, have them uh, correct the situation. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, the hardliners, that, that, it's not going to help. But, mm -hmm. you know, again, taking the uh, perspective that half a loaf is better than none, I'd, I'd like to pursue it. That doesn't mean pass it. Let's see what we can come up with. Okay. Ordinance wise. Well, we have this, this model. Um, go ahead, Sean. Uh, in, and I think I completely agree with what Paul is saying about the ineffectiveness without escalation, but I think it's nice to have an ordinance that you can, uh, maybe this goes back to what Skip is talking about, you know, just put a little bit of pressure and maybe the people who don't know or the, the moderates uh, and just, it helps to have a variety of steps you can work toward to see mm -hmm. if them will work. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're all for an ordinance, but you got to put some teeth in it. And if something like this doesn't pass, then maybe you beef up the ordinance you already have with zoning, with enforcement and fines. Yeah. Well, are, even, these, even, these, are these people paying their taxes? Uh, Is that yeah. I don't know the answer to that. No. <laughs> So even yeah. if even if our zoning administrator could send out notices so that it is coming from the town that it is stating this is an issue um, something needs to be done about it and and making the next step whether it be a fine or putting a penalty so that some action gets taken place whether it's building a structure without a zoning permit or vehicles or junk. Yeah. That's true. That any enforcement action should start with a, a notice of alleged violation, some kind of a letter that uh, put people on notice that, that they're being looked at. And, and this model ordinance that uh, BLCT set, there are, there are steps, you know, fines, um, uh, warning letters, et cetera. There's, there's a whole uh, process for dealing with a situation in the template. Um, I know I sent I sent the VLC template out to. I have it. I, I haven't read the whole thing. I've read some of it. Yeah. Uh, I have to read it too, Michael. Yeah, yeah. I, I have I've read it through once, um, but um, so you know, Sean and Joyce, if you would like, I think. In fact, I think um, this afternoon I sent um, Joyce. I sent it to Mark anyway. What I would wish I'd imagine that you would have it too, but. Um, I'll send it to everybody who's been here tonight kind of concerned about this and um, are, are the and folks who are are here willing to work on kind of like a little group to come up with something they could propose to us just because I know we've got a lot on our plates and that might help get it moved along a little bit mm -hmm. yes that's just the thought I had because I know yeah. Michael's got a lot and I've got a lot and Brian does so just sometimes things tend to lag just because of the time constraints right. we all have. Yeah. Michael, po point, point of clarification. Sure. Michael and I talked a couple of weeks ago about fines. Fines have no teeth in them, okay? You right. assess a fine, and if the people refuse to pay and they refuse to pay, it just gets set up as a lien on the property, and that never gets collected until the property is, is, is sold. So the town, in effect, yes, we have an ordinance that has fines, whatever in it, but there's no way to enforce the collection of the fines uh, that have been levied. And I think the maximum limit on the fine was what, $1,000, Michael? I forget. Yeah, I can't remember. But you know, there is sort of a process if a fine isn't paid, and I don't know how it really works, um, but it can, the whole um, 
formality of the the warnings and the fines and all can be you know if they aren't paid they can be sent to the washington county superior court and they're supposed to pick up the ball and try to to um have the fines and the enforcement um implemented but i don't know you know i've never gone through that process i don't know how successful they are either um but yeah, it's that's the thing. It's the teeth, you know, the teeth are pretty well worn, filed down. It's kind of like biting somebody with gums, your gums, you know. It's, fr it's frustrating. But yeah. Yeah, because this is all free, because we're just, it's, we have drug overdoses. I can't get the police to come. So it's just the whole thing's very frustrating for everybody. Right. Yeah. Diana. Right. So as you, when you were zoning administrator, um, how was your enforcement? Was there a standard letter that you issued? Um, how did you handle that? I think we used to have a letter. I don't know if I could find it now, but I certainly wrote enough notices of alleged violation when I worked for the state also. So I could Di possibly something to put together a draft that Skip could, I mean, that, uh, Bob could maybe use. Diana, you've got everything on that computer dating back to 1990 something. <laughs> I know, I've seen it. I'll find it. <laughs> Just, uh, you could type in a little search and see if it pops hey, out yeah. of the, the, the box. So, um, so I'll send out this model ordinance and you know, I, I am, you know, with what time I have, you know, I'm, I'm willing to kind of work with Skip and Sean and Joyce or Mark or whoever um, to kind of coordinate um, just working on this, this ordinance and, um, you know, we'll get it, maybe get a draft that we can again discuss at a select board meeting and, and then probably having some type of public hearing. It might be good, you know, just having a public hearing might be give other people a chance once we can meet sure. actually in a physical place to um, there. I'm sure there are other people that have feelings about this. Um, it might be just a forum for people to, to um, share or vent or whatever. Um, and, you know, we can kind of go with, with what we hear at that hearing. Um, so, um, but we'll it would be good to uh, have a, if you have a draft, if somebody's working on a draft, it's good to, Send something like that out to the public in order to right. get people interested to come to us. Right, we could we could post it on our website or our front porch forum, um, which you know, and and that would that would help. You're right, Diane. Because you'd want to you'd want to be able to have written input and then also a meeting where people could come if they wanted to speak in person. I agree. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Can I make a comment on this? Sure. Yeah, and I I think it's a good idea that you have some kind of enforcement, but. I've found it over the years very, very hard to get blood out of a stone. So I don't think the first channel should be starting them with a fine. I agree. Yeah, agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Most, you know, most of these situations, it is sort of getting blood out of a stone. Uh, yeah. 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 So, and you know, if they can't pay the fine, then, you know. Yeah, put them so well, They probably ain't gonna sell it because the house ain't worth enough to pay the fine. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it it's it's not a guarantee, that's for sure. And I think you know, no. if we we should you know, realize I, that. Yeah. I think there needs to be something done, but I, I hopefully there's some thought put into it to uh, make them feel like it. Maybe they ought to clean their right. act up. For the sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Agreed. Okay. So we'll we'll continue working on this situation or situations. Um, yeah, that's why I think the group you've got, if they want to work on, I think that would get a good start, and then the public input can kind of help shape that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else about this issue at all that um, that anybody would like to share? Can I just make a quick comment about the shooting at night and the and an idea for an ordinance about that? Um, Sure. Coyote, coyote hunting season is open 24 7, 365 days a year. And a lot of people hunt them at night. 
-hmm. and there's a lot of coyote hunters in Woodbury. So they might be objecting to not being able to shoot at a certain time at night. Right. Just saying. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think coyote hunting would be definitely would be different than what this guy is doing where you have a large number of rounds being fired in rapid succession. I've counted as many as 10 and most consistently it's 10 bang, 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 and stop reload. Bang. And it, you know, that's not coyote shooting. I don't know how right. you structure an ordinance to differentiate between coyote shooting and, and that type of uh, rapid fire, but something to think about. Appreciate yeah, the comment definitely. about the coyote shooting. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just a bad shot. <laughs> <laughs> How much do bullets cost these days? He's burning yeah. a lot of money. Anything else? Okay. Well, um, thanks for participating. I really appreciate it. Um, and we'll move on to the town highway report. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate it. Take care. Thank, Thank you, you very Sean. much. Thank you guys yeah. for working on this. Yeah. Oh. Skip, let Sean know I'll send him the uh, the model ordinance. I'll minutes. tell him that after he left, we appointed him chairman of this committee. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Maybe we should. We'll Talk to you later. That'll okay, thanks, Skip. Bye-bye. So, um, Chuck, it, you have the floor here, I guess. Um, well, <laughs> one or the other, right? Right, uh, yeah. Boys have been uh, cutting roadsides, mm -hmm. and, and Greg and Peter are doing a real good job of getting them laid back. We're not getting the brush picked up nearly as fast as I'd like to see it. But, um, the county road was left with some brush on it over the weekend, it was a short stretch. Um, yeah. Greg's the greater honing. He had two days off last week. Um, I guess that's about it. Okay. All right. Anything? Anything new on the um, the excavator? Is that? Uh, we haven't seen the parts. Yet. Okay. So wait. You're we waiting for seen the, the parts. parts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. And I'm hoping that. I would really like to see Greg back over there two, three days so we can move him off Charity Hill before they came. Yeah, yeah. Once they, once we move it to the shop and, and do the work on uh, the undercarriage, we're not going back Charity Hill. Okay. okay. Yeah. There's too much other stuff to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How much, how much more work is there on Charity Hill to finish it up? Uh, we're going to put culverts in by King King's driveway, resurface it. Which we'll do after the excavator leaves, but um, we were going to clean the, uh, clean the ditches down King Pondro, but I'm going to try to get Greg over there with a the grader and a bucket loader uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping to have that done with the, the grader and the bucket loader without the excavator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. And hopefully we can. I told the guys worked. Part-time guys worked, well, I think 30 hours last week, and I told them to work them 30 hours this week to get the brush picked up out of the roads. Okay, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, fine with that. Yep. Can we right. we stretch a little more out of that? Because it don't seem like it's getting picked up real fast. I hate to leave it over the weekend again. Well, you know, I, I, I drove on that section of County Road, and you know, I thought, oh, I, when I saw it, I said, oh, they'll probably get to that Monday. Um, you know, it's the tractor and more can probably go along at a more of a clip than the folks coming behind it so you know i think as long as it is as it doesn't stay there for two weeks or a month um well it's not i mean we're we're yeah. working at somebody on yeah. it every day i mean I, i'm good with whatever you decide chuck whatever needs to be done is kind of my opinion right okay yeah i just hate to leave, uh, fourth of july is coming right up and i hate to leave it on the roads on the, over fourth of july weekend and stuff. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah keep it clean yeah, and if it does take a, a day or a couple days to get to it, um, you know, I think we all know that somebody knows it's there and, it, and that it will get dealt with, so. Right, okay. Brian and Paul, do you have any questions at all? Or um, Yeah, I was sent Chuck an email, but he's right here. I don't know who's, uh, I got a complaint on Greenwood Lake Road that someone left two buckets of something 
uh, on the hill going up in the town right away. I don't know if that's something we deal with, but they complained to me about it. Two bucket, two five gallon pails or something? Yeah, if you drive up just at the where Wayne Dunlap's old driveway gate is, right on the edge of yeah. the dirt, someone left two buckets there, and I don't, he doesn't know who put it there, and I don't know who put it there. I mean, we could I'll run the road. I don't know if we're supposed to pick that up. Or <laughs> I'll take care of it. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know who's supposed to either, but. Yeah, I yeah, don't know. I know. We, we'll get you know, it done. I don't even know what it is. Right. Well, me either, but we'll check it out. Maybe All choose right. Doyle, Brian, can you? Yeah, that saves, saves me having to send you an email. I was going to call you, but that saves a trip. <laughs> we, yeah. we, could, yeah. we could have the road crew <laughs> doing a lot of trash picking up if we. As the, oh yeah, yeah. leave stuff on the yeah. side of the road all over the place. Yeah, I thought right. it was like a little complaints like, who left it? I don't know. It's, it's in the town right away. You're going to leave it there? I'm like, uh, oh no. <laughs> well, I hadn't seen it, but I ain't been over that way for a day no, or two. Uh, Greg didn't say anything about it. I had him hone that road the other day, and he didn't say anything about it. Yeah, either. yeah, okay. You know how that goes. Yep. But I'll, I'll take care of that tomorrow. Yep. Okay. Right. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Brian, do you have any any questions for Chuck? Uh, no. Oh, okay. So, I got Chuck, one more, anything one else? One more statement. Okay. Yeah, the one gun was supposed to went to Bears today to be assessed for inspection. Yeah. And I had to cancel the appointment. I wanted to be able to go up, have something to say tonight about it. One of the hinges on the dump body have brought it out and uh -huh. one of the hinges has come disconnected so it's not safe to dump the body uh -huh. okay I'm gonna put the tires on that 4900 we bought two weeks ago i guess yeah uh tomorrow and put the chloride tank in it so then i can get it out to bears and get it assessed to see what we're gonna have to put in it mm -hmm. and if it's gonna be anywhere near reasonable i would like to um Purchase that flatbed down in Wolcott with the idea that we're going to put a V-Box sander on it for salt and a decent snowplow on the front of it. Maybe not new, but a decent one. Do you want to discuss what would be a, a reasonable price for fixing up the 550 and, you know, so we could kind of set a limit and if, if it can't be fixed up for that, then we would go to your, the second option that you just mentioned? Um, talking about keeping the truck if we decide to keep the truck we put the flatbed on it right chuck right we're gonna yeah. have to do something because the body's rotted out of the dump truck body and one hinge is broke on it now so it's not safe to use yeah okay. i mean other you can run around pick brush up with it and stuff like that but as far mm -hmm. as doing anything with it you can't yeah and can can but, you remind uh, remind us of what the price is for the uh truck that you just mentioned the one in is it in yep. wolcott it's just a body, right? No, it's, it's a flatbed body. It's twelve yeah, hundred. Okay, flatbed body. Okay, all right. And that would go on the on yeah, the five fifty. Okay. Now, okay. Yes. Now I understand better. Yeah. I want to make sure that you guys understand. If we put a flatbed on that truck and keep it, that means we're going to have to come up with a V box sander and a decent snowplow to go in front of it. Yeah. Later, before winter, before snow flies. You know, I don't. I don't want you to think that we're going to put twelve hundred dollars into it and get it inspected and we're all done. No, we're I got to have some way of putting. It. Yeah, I think it's a good okay, idea, and I, I think we haven't spent all the insurance money that we had lost on that other truck. We can. I'm in favor of, if it's a reasonable amount to go ahead and do all that stuff to get that truck well, used. I'm going to get a price on it, and I'll bring that back to you guys. Yeah, uh, I you know, I don't. Okay, that's and, good. I'll try to have a price on a V box and a and a snowplow and the body and the inspection, so you'll know exactly what you're going to have put into it to make it usable. Yeah, I mean, my thought process on the repairs is when Bear's looking at it, uh, if we could get an idea that it can last two or three more years, you know, that's more of an issue to me than what the actual cost is to fix it. Right. Yeah. Bear already understands. That. Like I say, it was supposed to be in there today, so I'd have the report tonight, but we just couldn't make it work. Gotcha. So, 
I'll get on it by next meeting. We'll have some prices. Perfect. Are you talking about the 4,900? Are you talking about the 4,900 or the 550? Well, we've been talking about both of them. We're talking yeah, about both. the 550 Ford right now. Okay, okay, so that's what I'm confused. Yeah, that's what, we had two trucks we're talking about. All right. And I think a lot of what Chuck's talking about is transferable to another truck anyway uh, in the future, so. It would be. The, the V-Box and the plow and everything, I would, if we got a good three-quarter ton, we could move it on to that. Yeah. Um, so I'm here by phone. My not, computer fr froze up. So uh, I don't know why, again, why it happened. I can't even shut the damn thing down. But <laughs> mine's mine's doing mine's doing uh, reboot, reboot, reboot. So okay, so <laughs> that's why um, on my phone. <laughs> yeah, I'll kind of play with it as we go along here. But um, so so um, I guess that's all I have. But I just want to make sure you guys realize that putting a twelve hundred dollar flatbed on it's not going to fix the full problem. Correct. Right. Right. And what I had said, and I think you missed, Michael, was a bigger issue for me is that uh, the cost is a lower priority than could it last a couple, three more years, you know? Uh, right. That, you know, kind of because if you put a few thousand in it and they get a few more years out of it, that's worth it. If it's only going to last a year, then maybe, maybe not, you know? Yeah. I wonder if Bear could kind of give us an idea of, of you know, when he looked yes, at he it. Yes, he can. And, yes, he yeah. can, and he's going to. He's going to. Uh, okay, great. This is, this is just going out to find out what it needs for inspection and if the truck will stand okay. what we want to do for the next two or three years. That sounds yeah. good. Yeah, no sense putting money into it if it's... If it's going to break in no, half. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Greg and I have looked at the frame on it and the, actually the frame is not that bad. It's in pretty good shape. Okay. But, okay. I mean, okay. they're going to inspect, they're the ones inspecting it, so I want them to look, make sure... We didn't miss a cross member or something that brought yep. it off. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Chuck? I think that'll probably do it. Okay. Um, so shall we shall we move on to the next agenda item? Sure. Okay. Um, Paul, could you just kind of give us a, an update on um, the paving? I. Okay. So we awarded the bid to um, Green Mountain Paving. Um, and I spoke to them. I haven't heard back from my email yet, but uh, they're going to do it. It'll be sometime mid to late July. Uh, no firm date yet. Uh, the contract, uh, the bid proposal said it had to be done by September 1st. So I'll be working on that with him. I'm working on getting a contract uh, together for them to, for us to review with the, with them to sign. Um, yeah. I did meet with VTrans over our highway access permit, which apparently we had to have. And uh, that has been issued. Um, there was a struggle there. They kind of don't like uh, the how wide the entrance is, and they don't like the island allowing parking. They wanted all that stuff moved, and I kind of said, no, we're not doing that. I said, we're just repaving the parking lot. So we had a little session there, but they uh, apparently have decided to issue the permit. So because we don't have a hundred grand to reconfigure the whole parking lot. So, right. so that's it. Permit's been issued, and Five days before we do the work, uh, I'll send it through to the other board members. And Chuck, I didn't get to do it yet. It just the weekend got way too busy with calls. Um, they uh, want to come and inspect yeah, five yeah. days before it, and then once it's finished. So I'll work with uh, Chuck on that. What was that, Paul? You cut out there. Oh, on, I'm sorry. Uh, the driveway to the school. Well, they don't like the width of the. Uh, yeah, you did. did you get through that part of it, or did you lose me? No, again? I didn't. Okay, so the state didn't yeah. like the width of the access in front of the fire station. They t like to limit those to forty feet, um, and they also didn't like oh. the fact that the island that's there leaves room for parking. So they he kind of started off, well, we need to close this up, put curbs in, we need to take out the island and move it. So it, it's only three feet or four feet off the white line. And I said, ah, that, that's not happening. <laughs> no, said, we don't have any money for no. that. <laughs> I said, if that's a right. conversation you want to have, I yeah. said, we need to pave this parking lot. And so they worked it out. We got the permit. Um, hopefully they'll stick to that when they do the, Good. there's going to be an inspection by VTrans five days before 
um, that we start the project. So I'll be in touch with you when that's going to happen. And, uh, yeah. and uh, then they've got to look at it after. So I kind of told them, we're not changing anything. You guys put that entrance in to, uh, to, to Valley Lake Road because he didn't like that either. I said, well, you guys did it. The state did it in 2000. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so anyway, so I, it looks right. like it's going to work out at this point. Good. Uh, just one other comment. Um, we talked last we talked last week about uh, granite blocks, and you guys okayed them. They should be yep. here. I thought they might be here today, but it's going to be in the next two or three days. Okay. okay. Did you mean? And did you mean cement blocks? About it and we're going to get them. Did, yes. did you mean cement blocks, Chuck? Yes, cement blocks. Yep. Supposed to, they should be here tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, sometime right here, right off. Okay. Great. For the for the school driveway and then the road down by your house, we're gonna put okay. fix that right. too. Yeah. And okay. one over on uh, Wilbur Road. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. But I didn't drop a ball on it. They'll be here. Yeah, it takes time. In the next yeah, day. you're doing well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything else at all about the roads from anybody? Oh, and that's the paving update. So hopefully the end of July, mid to end of July, he said, I'm, I'm guessing um, I try to keep him off the week. I'm on vacation just so I can kind of watch it. So I got to have a, right. he hasn't gotten back to me since I told him he had the bid. So I kind of got to reach back out. Yeah. But so we'll see okay. how it goes. Okay, great. So um, next thing on the agenda is the town treasurer's report. Over the past two weeks, um, for delinquencies, we took in $3,228.60, bringing us down to $78,575.27 for delinquencies. Um, taking in revenue, um, records, restore records restoration, um, the Conservation Commission was given a $1,000 grant. There was um, land copies, vault fees, copies at cost, um, totaling $1,540.20. Um, on Saturday, uh, the disbursements for the checks um, for the old store were given and accepted. And um, hopefully that is a done deal. And uh, wow. we all can Public say- Public congratulations on Congratulations, that. everybody. Yes. Awesome. Yay. Yes, congratulations, Brandy. <laughs> Long process. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully that's the final chapter. At least. <laughs> For, for the property owners anyway. Um, so getting ready to end the fiscal year, um, I will be doing a another payroll run, probably another AP run before the end of the month um, to get all of um, June's invoices paid for um, to finish out the fiscal year. Um, all the stipends, um, select board, town hall, um, E911, all those will be paid for on Monday of next week. Um, and um, depending on how things come in, I may do another run on, on Tuesday to close out the fiscal year. But it's here. It's right Yeah, around. we're almost there. Yeah. Yep. I, I have, um, this is more, um, you know, it was, we discussed this under the personnel policy at our last meeting, but I don't know if we ever resolved it, but there was an issue for um, Greg Parkhurst on getting, um, you know, uh, getting paid for some unused uh, vacation time. I can't, it doesn't seem like we ever really made a decision on that. We talked, you know, and it's, it sounds like if, if we, you know, we should probably make a decision about that tonight um so that um you know brandy could if we decide to do that um brandy could write a check for that before the sure. fiscal my, my year question is that, is that what we've historically done to this point michael 
We have in the past, um, it's not in the personnel policy to do that anymore. Um, I know I know that um, Greg has received payment for unused vacation time in the past, and I think Diana might have also, Brandy would probably know that better than me, but so we have done it. Um, um, but again, it, it's, there isn't the language for it in the personnel policy right at the moment. So yeah, I think it says you may, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, a couple of years ago, it was required. And I asked uh, the select board at the time if they would change it to a may, because yeah. I yeah. would rather, sometimes would rather carry it over than to uh, sure. get the mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so my feeling on it, Michael, is, if, I, I, how many hours are we talking about? It's not a lot. Is it like 12 hours, Brandy? It's 20 and a half. Okay, all right. I mean, I'd like to fix the problem, but we haven't fixed it yet, so I don't want really right. Greg to be, you know, but that's what's been done in the past. That's kind of my feeling on it. I'd like to fix it moving forward, though. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. We need to fix that, yeah. And especially for budgeting, if, if right. it is going to be carried over that, now we're going to have to budget for um, two or three weeks that if they're not taking vacation and they're getting paid out, that we need to to um, factor that in the budget because we haven't been. Right. Hello. Can I say something here? Yes, yeah. of course. Uh, last sled board meeting, I brought it up. Uh, maybe it was a, the, the special meeting we had down there. They want Monday and Tuesday off, 29th to 30th, and you guys okayed that. To use up yep. that time. Yep. That's for yep. personal time, though, not vacation time. Yeah, that's for personal time. Okay. I just wanted to make yep. sure you hadn't forgotten. Yep. No. No. Yeah, because I, I want to fix the problem so moving forward, we don't pay for time. We carry it forward, but we got to work on that some more. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So I so, wouldn't be a to stick with past practice this time only because it's not really fair to the people that the change mm -hmm. in the you're already in the boat, you know? Okay. All right. Yeah, how, how do you feel about that, Brian? Yeah, I agree with Paul. We should pay. Okay. Yeah. But I Great. want to fix that. You know, we'll work on this in the next couple of months, get the policy the way we're not going to have to do that anymore. Yeah. 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 Brent, uh, Brandy, how, would you like us to, to vote on this for, for the record or are you okay with us just having a verbal agreement? A verbal agreement and I'll have Greg um, fill out an extra timesheet stating um, that 20 and a half hours for vacation uh, paid out um, at the next payroll run next, for next Monday. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because as we were talking about money, it came into my head and, and later yeah, on. Yeah, no, I, I knew we hadn't resolved it. Yeah. Um, but as I said, we want to make them aware that, well, if we can come to an agreement on it, of mm -hmm. how we will deal with it moving forward. Probably, in my yeah. opinion, I don't want to be in this position again. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, anything else, Brandy? Um, I don't believe so. I, okay. I mean, the, the part timers will be getting paid their their um, ten holidays at four hours per day. Um, okay. I have that ready to be to be paid out next Monday also. Okay. Um, Okay. All right. Okay. Um, shall we move on? Any any questions for Brandy at all? No, I'm good. And I'll get down and sign that paperwork. Okay. All right. I'm good. Okay. Uh, so town clerk's report. Okay. Well, last week uh, we became a Wi-Fi hot spot. Uh, yes. um, Trevor... Trevor Thorpe, who's our representative on uh, some... CV Fiber. Thank you. <laughs> he flagged the fact that the state was willing to give us a free Wi-Fi hotspot, you know, a thing. Uh, and whoever Michael sent it around, and thank goodness Skip Marcassani jumped on it because yep. the rest of us didn't know what to do with it. Right. And so uh, the guy with the with the contract to provide this free equipment came in one day last week with Skip, and they ran around and up and downstairs and and got it all installed. 
And now that's a nice benefit for people who live out here in the boondocks. Right. Um, and I'm, there is going to be, I mean, this, the equipment was free, the installation was free. I mean, it's paid for by the state in the first year, but after the first year, there will be a charge. I don't remember, it was like $300 for five years or $500 for three years or something. It wasn't, wasn't a huge amount. No, it's not it a lot. It just wasn't until the, in, the installation has no. already happened. And it, it's it's my understanding with this, um, and I do want to thank Skip, because he really took the ball yes. on this and, and made it yeah, happen. Really. Um, this this um, it's kind of augmenting the Wi-Fi that's already at the town office, and it it will be beneficial to, in some way, to folks that live a you know away from the um, town office. It, somehow this uh, allows people a little bit better uh, access, um, you know, on some of the back roads that are within the periphery of the of the town office, and there's well, also. There's also going to be a second spot um, at the school, um, but the OSSU, the supervisory union, is overseeing that. So there will mm -hmm. be actually two spots in town. Laura used it over the weekend, and she said it's much faster than just using our, our Wi-Fi from the building, which people have also been doing in the parking lot. But mm -hmm. this new one is much better. So um, I would like to ask a permission to buy a sign that I, somehow to differentiate where people can park, because now that it's a Wi-Fi hotspot, they don't have to park right next to the building. So I'd like uh -huh. to up a sign that maybe says uh, com commuter parking and Wi-Fi parking here and town office parking over here, because sure. I, I would check with the church first because Commuter parking will mostly be on their property, but we should have at least three or four spaces on our right. town side. I agree and, with that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't do think would would mind because the commuters don't park there on Sundays. So right. <laughs> most yep. of them don't. The the so, road. If you Diane, if you talk to the road crew, they have a place that would, could create those signs if you came up with that. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have and? Maybe they have an extra pole, or have to order a pole also, or no? They what? have they have poles, I think, and I think they could get it in place. I I would I would hope. Yeah. Okay, I'll work on the language and I'll find out where to get it. Okay. Okay, so um, I realized recently that when people go to our website and they click, uh, they want information, they click on clerk at woodburyvermont.org. I thought that was email for me, but come to find out that goes to everybody. And it was kind of confusing sometimes because other people on that email group are like the selectmen or answering emails at the same time. Oh, which, you know, so anyways, I had them change it. So okay. it's going to be info at Woodbury Vermont, woodburyvt.org will be for people who have general questions and then anybody can answer it. Uh, and my other Woodbury clerk at Comcast.net uh, email is on there for people who want to email me particularly. Okay, so all all of the different like land requests or property stuff um, that'll go to you directly and not not to me or anyone else on the select board, whoever. Right. Good. They might if they don't know where to send it. They might send it to o info and then okay. somebody will have to. Uh, forward it around, but uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. tomorrow night is a board of abatement meeting. I hope we've only got one, one applicant, and um, to and also to deal with that leftover taxes that the board agreed to pay years ago mm -hmm. on the FEMA site. Okay. Um, if you don't want to come, please don't bother to come because if we get more than seven people, it's going to be I mean, the board has 12, 12 members. Actually, it's 13, except Mary Genjami has two spots. She's, she's uh, both a JP and a Lister. Um, so, yeah, it's, that's an awful lot of people to have someone have to come and make their right. case. <laughs> Plus, it's going to be miserably hot in the town it's hall. Be hot in the town hall. So. 
Do you, do you have yeah. a sense of how many people have indicated that they would be there? Quite a few. I know I've heard from Paul. I heard from Patrick and Peter and Mary Genjami. I know Ron will be there, and Brandy said she'll be there. So, you know, I, there's I, our seven there with me. I, I have a pretty, pretty <laughs> full out day what? tomorrow, and I would love to not be there. But if you need okay. me, give me a call. Okay. Hey. By the way, is that your car up by the Beaver Dam? No, I don't know whose car that is. With the flashing lights blink, it was there this morning when I went into Hardwick, and it was there when I came back. When I maybe first saw our, it, I thought maybe it's Michael doing the Beaver thing. But then I came by again, and it's still there. And I said, "You guys should go see if he's stuck in the dam or something." Well, you know, I, I think <laughs> I think word is out that we that will you know the town will take care of anybody's abandoned vehicle. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of people in town. Yeah. There's a lot of people around. Yeah. yeah. Just to give you some context, the fire department's had 18 runs in the last eight days. Wow. Oh, my goodness. We've been out almost continuously. It's been terrible. That's and not that rescue. That's actually fires. That's and medical accidents. and fire. We've had two big fires. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, things are pretty dry now, so I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, there's a lot of people getting hurt, and it's just there's a lot of people around. The lakes are full, or they were in the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah hopefully that car, I mean, they, at least they put the flashers on, so may, I it's still imagine on, so. The, the, it's gone? All right, good. No, it's still, it's still on. There? The oh, battery. it's still on? Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see how long the battery holds up. <laughs> yeah. We get to, if we're going to get that battery, if it lasts for two days. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, no, that wasn't so me. I, got any other questions for me? I think I'm all set. Can't so I got your notice on the line adjustment. I'm going to pass that off to Chance because he's the person that has to sign that stuff. So I'll have him be in touch with you, Diana. I, I did uh, CC him on that email. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll just make sure he, because he has to do and all I, this yeah. I talked with Chris Green today about whether that has to be like really formalized and whether he could put it into something, you know, more yeah. illegal looking. But he said, no, I could do it. So I'll okay. take another right. stab at making it into a uh, signable document. And I'll make sure Chance reaches out to you, work with you, with you on that. Okay. Okay. Anything to share about the uh, FEMA and the old store? <clears throat> oh. Well, yeah, they, uh, supposedly our payment is uh, being processed. It would be great if that came in before the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have asked, if now the Stephanie Smith said the FEMA people are talking about maybe doing a virtual site visit, which seems, I mean, it's crazy for them to drive up here from Boston to look at a yeah. flat half acre <laughs> lot. I would really like to get it. Russell is waiting for approval to, you know, buy the trees, even if he can't put them in quite yet. Right. So I'm just well, waiting to hear on that. And I wonder if the town garage has like grass seed. They have. Yes, they do. They do. Yeah. Did yeah. you throw some down there? Because it's not doing very well. Not um, doing very well. I only heard part of that, Diana. Said the grass down there isn't doing very well. I wonder if you could throw some more seed down there. Yeah, we'll get on it this week. Right. I, I I think you know for seeding there we should wait until we've got we're going to get a little bit of a wet spell. Just I think break. that's part of the part of the problem is it's been so dry that yeah. the seed is super dry anything. right now. Yeah. And the, and as soon as he first put the seed down, it there was a big downpour, so a lot of it sort of just got washed away from. Right. Where it was originally settling. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, maybe if it's all right with the select board, I'll have them hydro seed that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. sure. I, it would grow a lot better. Yeah. It would, it yeah. Would, yeah. That's good. I don't know how, uh, what Brian's intending as far as the possibility of doing more work on that stream or if that's something you I mean you've already got your budget for next year so right. I don't know if we should proceed with when the time comes after FEMA gives their final approval whether we should 
proceed with the rest of the landscaping or wait until you decide whether you want to dig away at that stream bank some more? Yeah. Um, well, did you, have you had a chance to look into um, the stream restoration? You know, you mentioned that there might be some money to help pay for that. Yeah, I'll see another FEMA grant. Oh, it would be I'm another not, FEMA grant? Oh, I thought, I, I, no, no. <laughs> no, so I thought you had mentioned yeah, I, that there was some money sitting somewhere that needed to be spent and, and uh, somebody would connect the town with it. Huh, no, I that wasn't. That wasn't it, from, okay. Uh, and uh, yeah. any extra money that ANR <laughs> might have had for stream restoration is probably dried up now, too. Right. Thank you, bro. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, well, I'm I guess started, it's going to be the way it is then for a while. I've started on that curb to go in front of the culvert there. Okay, uh, yeah. great. I've been been extremely busy the last week and a half, and I haven't got it drawn up, but I will by the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Shauna wanted to look at that. I mean, even if the work isn't being done on their property, if you're standing in there right of way with your equipment, they still need one of those 1111 permits. Yeah. yeah, she did. Yeah. She did yeah. request to, to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. talked to us that day about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got the do contact it. person that does that too, so now I'm familiar right. with this person. Don't call him. We'll uh, call. <laughs> we'll, we'll go through Shauna. Guy that's got to come. <laughs> yeah. Go through right. Shauna. Don't go through Montpelier. Yeah. And we'll. Uh, <laughs> you guys can okay it or whatever you want to do, but I will okay. have it for next meeting. Okay. No. Anything else, Diana? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Diana at all? I'm good. I'm good. good. All right. So um, the next thing on the agenda is the Washington County Sheriff's Department contract. I haven't seen that. It's a pretty standard thing. Um, I, I don't know if Paul or Brian, if you guys have had a chance to look at it or I haven't Diana, seen it get sent. I, I don't think I it's been. Go ahead, Diana. I thought I sent it around. No, it hasn't come to me anyway. Um, yeah, hey, let me go. Again, if it's what we've been doing, I'm not opposed to resigning it anyway. Okay. Yeah, if it's the same thing, yes. I, mean, I think I think it usually requires the chair to sign it. I could get down to the town office and take a look at it, but it, it's always pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was in your. Uh, your mail slot there. Oh, okay. Well, oh, it is pretty standard. Do we just have to fill in the number of hours and the number of dollars? Okay. Okay. So, and you know what we budgeted, Michael. So I'm good with just having right. you sign. If you need a motion, I can do that. Yeah. Me yeah. As well. okay. okay. And and I don't think we need to do the number of hours because you can't figure. You know, you just they, five thousand dollars or whatever. Um, right. They they never budgeted. quite do do what we request anyway. I say just put the. <laughs> budget it in there and see how much we get out of it. Okay. In fact, we sent the guy up to West Woodbury. I wonder if he went. Well, you know, I can add, he did go up, but I can, I can add a little bit more about that. Um, I got, last week I got two calls from property owners up in West Woodbury complaining about the ATVs. Um, and one of them actually had kind of recorded the number of ATVs and the day I had, which I had requested in an earlier conversation with this person. Um, so, cause the sheriff's department is always asked, um, you know, give us a time when there, the problem is, is right. happening so that when we're there, we could actually be effective rather than just going up there and listening to the birds sing or whatever. Um, so uh, this, property owner did give me some time and a suggested spot. And um, I got an email from him uh, that I saw this afternoon getting ready for the meeting that last Saturday, the sheriff's department was up there um, oh. for about five hours and the traffic, ATV traffic on the class three road was significantly um, decreased. And so he's hoping that maybe their presence there helped. Uh, the problem there is that there's a class four, you know, it, it's legal for ATVs to be on class four roads and there's a class four road coming from Hardwick that that ends in in the um, West Woodbury Road. Um, 
and then it's just class three for a short, short section until the West Woodbury Road uh, becomes class four again. So these people are coming on a trail and, and trying to access the, the West Woodbury Road further down where it is class four. Um, a short so, section. It's a long section. It's, well, couple it's, for, miles it's a couple miles. It's a couple miles. You're right. Um, and the people that live along the road do not like the the level of ATV traffic that's there. You know, every summer we get lots of complaints. Yeah. People, but. Problem for years. It's it's illegal for them to be riding on the class three road, and I, they haven't been able to but, figure out a trail to go around and to meet. So they can go down to Hardwick and go to the House of Pizza and go to M&M. <laughs> you know, they, they, the snowmobilers have done that, but the ATVs have not. So Any, Anyway, the Washington County Sheriff's Department was pretty responsive and, um, and you know, um, after I spoke with them, so it's... We'll Did they see. say whether they stopped anybody? Uh, they... I haven't talked to the sheriff's department, and but I did get two um, thank yous from two residents up there. Um, you can see it, great. Yeah. So. Great. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, so um, we could make a motion, or um, that I sign that contract after reviewing it, um, or we could I could just do it. Um, I'll just make the motion that way. Okay. Gotta... Go ahead. I second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so I'll, I'll get down to the town office and sign it and we'll send it on to them. Okay. Okay. And I, I would be curious, maybe at a, um, a future select board meeting, Randy, if, if, if you could come up with the figures for how much the town has taken in from their, their road work. Uh, it's always kind of a curiosity to see how much we're spending and how much we're getting back through the, the fines. Um, if there was any way to on the contract whether to put um i know this is far-fetched but splitting it the gentleman that the cop that stopped at the office never even knew or had even been to west woodbury right um but if if there was somewhere on the contract that we could split um saying you know a quarter a quarter here in south woodbury a quarter up in west woodbury just so that it's dispersed evenly and not sitting in the same spots that everybody knows they sit in. Right, yeah, around Woodbury Lake. Yeah. So that, that it was illegal for, I mean, he didn't know the difference between a class three and a class four road, and he didn't know that it was illegal for ATVs to run on class three roads. But anyways, but maybe he learned. <laughs> right, sounds like a, a rookie deputy to me. But we'll he was see. young. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So let's let's move on. Um, you know, I thought maybe what we could do is um, just. I know Gary's been sitting there patiently. Um, maybe we could just discuss the town constable a little bit more um, while while Gary is here, um, so he doesn't have to hang in till the bitter end unless he wants to. But um, <laughs> I, I have to admit that I haven't made much progress on connecting with other towns to, to learn a little bit more about what other towns do. Um, but I don't know, if, Gary, if you have had done any, done any research at all or? Uh, no, nothing nothing since the last time we met. I mean, I, right. I did do the online stuff prior to that, but I, I, yeah. there's too many different variables to even, I, I didn't know exactly what the town's looking for, so. Yeah. And you know, you had mentioned maybe the select board, uh, and maybe in discussion with you, if we could come up with a list of, um, you know, responsibilities or uh, for a town constable. Um, that's still, I, I think, definitely doable. And I think you know, we were thinking of looking to see what other towns have have in place to get an idea of what what that list might might entail. Um, hey, Michael, I've got one here for you. Sure. Um, Janet, Jan Aronson at one time was the town's, town services officer, I believe. Uh -huh. I that was the heading on that. And it gets away from constable, but it gets to kind of what Gary wants to do. Help people okay. in the town find services. And the uh, state has done away with that position. Really? <laughs> yeah. I did look it up there. Yeah. Still might have one if they have one who would 
working that way for a long time, but they've done away with that official position. Okay. Of being basically the town service officer was the conduit for uh, if a person ends up in your town on the weekend and they're in desperate need of services and you can't get you know all the agencies are closed. The town service officer had a certain amount of um, authority to contact the agencies on the weekend or maybe make sure that people uh, were taken care of. I don't know how uh, often that ever happened, but. So yeah, this, that's... you don't believe we could just make this position available for something like that and set what it can do? Uh, I don't see why we couldn't. I mean, we could check that out with VLCT or whoever, but. Yeah, because this uh, seems like a better fit to me than constable, because I just. Right. That gets into yeah. too much law enforcement stuff. I mean, I think yeah. we set the guidelines for whatever the person does. So right, yeah, right. I, I think. yeah, I don't see why we couldn't create a position like this. Something like that. With, yeah, with that in line, good. yeah. Well, um, you're talking about creating some uh, possible uh, ordinances like noise ordinance and junk ordinance, and not having any enforcement. So you know, it might be nice to have somebody who's at least willing to fucking and the let. Paul thinks that's not a good idea for people to, for you to, anyone to approach. It depends on the. I think it's okay just not to have to get in a confrontation with them. I think it's fine to have right. someone go there and talk to them about it. Right. Just document what they get the whatever. If they get ugly, leave. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, you know, like like I had mentioned, I, d I didn't make any headway, but it's still, we'll, we'll keep it on the agenda, and um, yeah. hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll have a, I, I'd like to at least contact the Callis constable, um, and, you know, we could, let's think about this um, town service officer um, a little bit more, and maybe um, that's yeah, what we'll call like it. Idea. Yeah, yeah, I like that idea. Um, so sure. we'll, yeah. we'll keep at it um and um come up with something here so, okay sure okay um so, i'd be happy to do some research for you too if you want somebody to make phone calls and ask around that i would appreciate that laura that would be um yeah, yeah that, would be that would be great you know part of what i was going to try to do is uh, you know i i haven't made much um there wasn't much that VLCT had to offer except for, you know, a whole series of state statutes, which I didn't look at. Um, <laughs> but maybe contacting some other towns um, that do have constables, you know, towns that are kind of equivalent in size and population as Woodbury. So we're, you know, we're not contacting the South Burlington Police Department or something like that, you know, something that right. where the town is comparable to Woodbury and, and um, if they do have a constable, you know, um, what, what that person does. And I, we could probably get them to send us the information that they have. That should be public information, I would, I would imagine. But sure. Maybe Diana's town clerk um, email tree would be a, a, an avenue for that. Yeah. But if you, would like, if you would like to do some work on that, that would be great. I would appreciate that. I'll definitely, that. I can do that Thursday when I work for you guys. Okay, all right. Um, anything else about the town constable or the town service officer? Good with that. Okay. Sounds like a game plan. Right. So um, let's move on to the personnel policy review. And I'm going to say the same thing I said to Gary. I haven't made much headway on that either. Me either. Yeah. I did get, we did get a response from Jill Muir. She did review the policy and she had some suggestions and comments. Um, which I have reviewed and I did kind of incorporate some of those. Um, I was hoping that I could share the personnel policy that I've been working on with this meeting. There is a way of doing that, um, but I tried just before the meeting and it didn't look like it was right. gonna work. Um, but um, I mean, that's what we really need to do is everybody have a copy of it in front well, I think of them. Better once we're sitting in the same room. Yeah. To work yeah. This is a little easier. Yeah. Um, so let's, um, that'll continue to be on the agenda. We'll just work on it, um, you know, ho hopefully with the next meeting. It sounds like we may be making some headway on having a, a physical meeting at the town hall. Um, yes. With, and maybe at some point, um, 
In fact, um, why don't we discuss that? Because we're kind of right there. Um, and maybe sure. Leith would join us. Um, you know, uh, Leith had mentioned that um, Hardwick did try doing this at their last select board meeting and, you know, having a meeting in a physical setting and also have a way for people who didn't feel comfortable being there to connect by Zoom. And it sounds like it didn't work out so great. Um, but, um, you know, Leaf had suggestions of either to have just a meeting in a physical setting um, that could be recorded by HCTV or to have just a straight Zoom meeting. But, um, you know, Paul was able to find out um, what the fire station has for... Um, We've got enough upload speed, I think. We just got to... I'd have to get yeah. together with Leaf to go... if he, To show him where we could run a cord through to get plugged into the network. Yeah. Yep. Hard, I think. What he wants to do yep how how far of a distance is it from your about, um, about 10 12 feet between the buildings and probably if you had a, yeah if it's probably a 75 foot cord we could probably stick it through a window and across the alley and through another window and if you yep. had 100 feet that's for sure but right well i i can get any cord we need if if that's the route we want to go and if if you guys decide you want to do uh, a live meeting but have be able to have uh be able to have it broadcast live on YouTube and on the channel, which some folks in Woodbury get channel 1080, but, um, but everybody else would see it through YouTube mm -hmm. and they'd be able to follow along and see it and listen. And uh, we could uh, simply just put a phone number on the screen. To call to, in. To call in, very old, old fashioned yeah. really, but, um, yeah. that, but that would work I like that better. better than do a half live, half Zoom. I don't think it's gonna work the very Zoom, well. Yeah. Right. The Zoom, um, you know, at the Hardwick meeting, uh, the board and the manager, they just had no attention for it. And um, it's, as you can imagine, it's really hard to convey the whole meeting. Um, right, you're just looking at one spot. <laughs> exactly. And so yeah. the one person who did get in was saying they couldn't hear a thing, basically. They right. couldn't hear anything. Yeah. So it's, right. it's pretty much useless to go that route. Um, yeah. But I think I think the live broadcast and the call-in idea could work um, as a hybrid situation. Like, um, I think it's worth a try, and if it doesn't, I, work, I agree. Yeah, I something. agree as well. Yep. Um, so it's it's just a matter of of me testing that out with Paul. Okay. I guess um, I, I guess I would just need to meet up with you. It wouldn't take me very long, you know. Yeah. Just give me. Uh, I'm a, I'm around a couple different days this week, and I'm on vacation next week, so. So okay. just get when you're around and I can get together with you. And when is your next meeting? Do you guys take a, a meeting off in July? Hardwick does, I know. No, nah, we're, uh, we're there yeah. every Tuesday evening. Yeah, yeah so and we are, no we won't be taking a, a, our next meeting will be the 13th of July and, and then the 27th. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, so we'd be well away from the 4th of July holiday. Because, sure. Yeah. Um, well, Paul, if you want to test it out, you said this week you might have time. You want to shoot me some times that are good? Okay, I can do that. Um, right. well, I'll send you an email right off and yeah, you can shoot respond me an email to that way. I won't forget. Yep. Okay. Yep. And oh, the only other thing for me in that scenario is that I, I would need to get in there ahead of time because it's a little bit more of a setup for me. Correct. To, yep. To do the live okay. broadcast and especially with everybody set out, I need mics and a mixer and it's a little bit more of a rigmarole, unfortunately, but um, um, I might need like 45 minutes before the meeting to get in there. Is that going to be a problem? No, 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 we'll get, we'll get you in there. Okay. I've got access and they've got access too. So we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let's, let's go for that on July 13th. Let's, um, well, we'll see how the test goes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and then if, if it doesn't work there for some reason, we might have, you know, we, we could, we could look into Woodbury Elementary. Yeah, we could check the school. I, I don't know what kind of issue the supervisory union would have, but I can, I can actually broach that subject with them just so we have a sense of, of an option if it doesn't work. Um, I'll check okay. that out. Sounds good. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so I just I just have one other uh, brief update follow up um, and then you know with the thoughts I guess let's let 
I still have a couple thoughts on this on the on the meeting. Um, so for a phone, what what would we want to use for a phone? Um, probably somebody's cell phone, yeah, the iPhone. Cell phone um, work off the Wi-Fi network there. Okay. All right. So and and we would have we would we could give that number in the you know the gen the agenda. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll work up a um, text that'll be different from what we've been doing with the Zoom meetings um, to let people know um, that we're trying something new um, yep. to, that would go along with the agenda. Okay, so so we'll use your, your cell phone number. Yeah, then. or we might even get to use, I think that we have a handset for the fire department's phone. We might okay. be able to Okay, all right, that. whatever, nice. yeah. I'll so try we'll, that out when I'm there with Lee. Okay, so we'll, okay, great. All right. Nice. Yep. Okay. So um, I just have an update with a uh, Woodbury stormwater final design that grant project that um, that's uh, actually underway now. We had our first um, it was a Zoom meeting. Um, actually, it was a go-to meeting, um, but I met with um, the folks from the Regional Planning Commission and uh, um, the engineers from Dubois and King, um, who are going to be doing the final design. Um, and uh, we've kind of got a, a plan um, for the progress of the full full design work. It would hopefully be done by the end of the calendar year um, of this year. Um, they may uh, be requesting that the road crew dig some test pits, um, which would would which would benefit or the town could use any anything that um, that the town contributes to their work. Um, is part of our in-kind donation. So, and I'll be tracking that. Um, I'll be tracking my own time. Uh, um, a part of that will be the time that I put into this project. Um, so, um, but it, so it, it has started. Um, there'll be, um, one question I had is, is that they were curious to see kind of what happened with the, in a flooding situation. And I remember the flood that we had a year ago in May I know there was some photographs taken and maybe even some I've got video. quite a few. If, if I could get my hands on some of the photographs and even some of the video, um, I could send that to them. They're, they're trying to, I, I really like Dubois and King. These guys are really practical. Yep. Um, and, um, you know, part of the issue for these um, uh, infiltration basins is how, how are they going to handle a flooding situation? Um, mm -hmm. Um, and there actually is a way where if there was a flooding situation, they would just kind of shut down and let the flood happen. Um, so um, there are different um, infiltration basins that they could use. Um, so they kind of wanted, they were curious about that. So if, if, if there is a way that you could get some. So just send me a, me a reminder email and I'll see okay, what I, I will or have someone gather up for you and send to you. Okay. I'll send you a reminder email. Yep. Because um, it'll be gone 30 seconds from now if you don't. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, I understand. I'm the same way. Yeah. Good. And, and and I have, they gave me a list of things to do. So I'll be doing a little bit of um, sending them some, some information. But um, so, and that the process would be that the first they would work up a 60% design. And then there would be like a, a town um, hearing or review of the design. They would come and do a presentation um we would try to get the different landowners involved um where these basins are actually going to go um and then based on the input from the 60 percent design from the town and, and town residents they would do a 90 percent design which again would be reviewed um for the final design which of 100 percent um, and then we're then we have those designs uh, ready for the implementation process so it's it which would be you know, a few years out, um, but we would be with those designs. We would be eligible for uh, other grants to actually pay for the implementation. Um, so that's kind of the process as it goes out. And I think um, I have the time. I'll will send out to to everybody the time frame. It's it's a kind of a schedule that that everybody agreed on. Um, and those sixty percent designs, I think, are early in the fall, like September or October maybe, um, or maybe even August, but I just, I, I haven't got that in my head, but I have it okay. in, in paper, so. So that's 
pretty much it. Does anybody have anything else that? Um... I don't. No. Okay. I'm good. No. Maybe, maybe while Chuck's right here, I, I know that he and I are having a hard time having our emails connect. So I just wanted to let Chuck know while he's right here in front of me on the screen anyway, um, that I there was a call uh, that I received from um, somebody up on East Long and uh, you know it was kind of a garbled message I didn't get I only got his last name it's hunt and yeah. he didn't give me, he didn't give me a number um, yeah. so I haven't been able to get back in touch with him but he he was talking about that culvert that um, he really was washed just up. here oh just before the meeting started he was just here and we talked oh good so you guys connected great yeah. great okay and I told him the first of next week we'd be up there to do it okay great all right. So, yeah. one way or okay. another, we got to get up there. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Good. Um, that's. I don't have anything else either. Um, a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Great.